with Do You Super League semi-final number one. Best of five between TH and Lin, two of the all-time greats colliding. All right. The admins are asking for the go-ahead and the players are giving it. The best orc against the best human in the world at the moment. Only one can make it to the final. We have no lower bracket. This is single limb. Best of five. We're about to start. Indeed, boys. This is it. Here are your players. They need no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway. Both are living in China at the moment. But of course, one is Korean, one is Chinese. TH, the winner of the WCG 2013, the current GCS champion. Not the Super GCS, but the normal GCS at least. So, what can he bring to the table? What is his strategy and what can Lin do? He is a WCG champion as well. He is uh, a BlizzCon champion. But his matchup versus human seems to be pretty weak. This is of course due to TH, Infi, Romantic. They are all so goddamn good against Orc. So will it be enough for June Park? Or is it TH's time? We will see. Here we go. Your first call was right on the money, man. Because if we take a look at the human base, it's a barracks first. We know what that means. That is most likely a Fire Lord Tower Rush. However, if he sees something suspicious, he may still go for the later hero. But look at how extremely late this altar is. So now it's way too late, I would say, to go for an Archmage. So yeah, dude, you're right. Fire Lord Tower Push. Unless something crazy happens here, and it's a strategy that I've never seen before. Yeah, we have seen some delayed Mountain Kings on this map as well by Infi, if I'm not mistaken. But I guess this is too late. You could play the mind games. You could build this tavern build order and then still go for Mountain King to totally trick your opponent, force him into a double burrow tech um, and something crazy. But it seems like everything is normal for now. We see a barracks, one burrow. Very aggressive though, this burrow by Lin. And, and the yeah. he's gonna go scouting. So he basically... Uh, reveals his timing. I wonder how intricate and in-depth Lin knows these timings. Because if he knows them by heart, uh, absolutely to the point, then he's going to realize this is a barracks first. If the footy runs straight over, but I like this. He's parking the footy outside the orc base to not reveal the timing. Really smart. And yeah, we don't see anything in the altar. No fake Mountain King. Nothing that would surprise Lin. This is 99%. A fire lord with his lava spawns and we have to wait a little until it's available but what's lin's reaction we see already the orc burrow is a little further ahead than it usually is but he still goes creeping fire lord is coming but no lumber mill yet he calls the militia and he will fast build the lumber mill then i guess but so far only arcane tower is available Circle of Nobility, nice find, and it's the two burrow tech. Of yes. course, the early footy is a great tell for this. He pretty much knew this was happening. Slight little mistake, one of the militia wasn't forced. Or was that actually intentional? I don't believe it was. But anyways, here we go. Tower's gonna be coming up soon, tech starts. What does the Blade Master prioritize here as a target? Looks to be the Fire Lord for now. Yeah, this is uh, quite an easy answer. It's the Fire Lord down to two thirds of HP so far. Militia duration is running out and this Lava Spawn has not attacked a single unit just yet. Only the altar, so it's very unlikely that it will split because it's also two thirds down. Fire uh, Towers are coming up, first one is cancelled already. Now of course the focus shifts to the buildings. Um, to not let it go up any further. The Grunt is taking care of the Fire Lord. I love what Lin is doing here with the split attacks. Grunt follows the Fire Lord. Blade Master takes care of the rest. Yeah, I mean, you only have two units here, so microing those isn't too hard. The hard thing here for the Orc to do is, what is the ideal target to focus? All your Orc players out there, pay attention what he tries to focus. He cancels one or two of the towers. He keeps the Fire Lord busy with the Grunt. Blade Master now looking towards the Peasants. But the Guard Towers are coming up and they don't seem to be getting touched at the moment. Well, the Blade Master can still hack and slay away. Tier 2 tech is halfway done. Fire Lord in trouble and he gets rid of a few workers here. Second Grunt is out, two workers falling. But yeah, it's time to knock down these towers. Otherwise, the first Guard Tower is up. I think it may be too late here. He has one Blade Master in range to attack. Most of the peasants are dead, so the repair is significantly uh, diminished. Both lava spawns have expired as well. No more summons for the human, but the first tower is up. Indeed, the second one is following, but 
Lin was still going for a fast tier 2 and a fast warmer as well, so he can go for headhunters, he can go for demolishers. This will help, especially since there's not too much repair um, on the guard towers, you mentioned it. He's trying to get up a barracks for walkers, or maybe even a Kodo first for the damage amplifier. But can he get a Shadowhunter out? That's a pretty good damage against this altar. Hey, he really needs a second hero. Oh, Fire Lord in trouble, but at this point if he dies, I don't even think it matters. He bought the space for the towers, he's gonna come back with full HP and more mana. So I think the blade is wasting his targets here a little bit. This would be a level 2 though if he finds the kill, which I think he will. With the speed stroll, there it is, has the critical strike, now unlocked. Tier 2 finished, more peons being made, Demolisher as well. Demolisher instead of second hero. Yeah, this is really interesting. He has the supply, but not the gold currently. Ogboro is helping a little bit, but this is a huge amount of footmen. Can the Blade Master do something against it? I don't think so. There's not gonna be a Shadow Hunter, so no hex, no heal wave. Okay, playing this single hero then. First oh, demolisher is gonna be out very soon. Second one coming after. So many footmen here though. Once they have defend, they can dive really deep, and defend is only a couple of seconds away from completion. Yeah, I made a mistake here, it's not a beastery, it is double barracks, so lots and lots of demolishers coming in. The AoE and siege damage is the key for Lin, but this rally point the footy. wasn't that great, and the footy capitalizes immediately. Blade Master's taking care of this one, but he's trying to repair with all he can, but this is a mission impossible. He tried to pop him out, but apparently that only works with Grunts, man. But what a block from that footy. That was so well done by TH, not allowing the demolisher to get back to the safety of the base. And the first one pops, and the second one is kind of surrounded as well. Oh no. But he gets rid of a few footmen here. You saw there was a mass of six to seven footmen storming this base, and now he's down to, what is it, four? Two of them are severely hurt. Blade Master has still two more windbox, but Lin cannot afford another burrow loss here. Otherwise, there's not going to be demolishers. His strategy seems to be... Mass uh, demolishers. All right. The siege so continues. And he needs more repair. Borrow, yeah, he needs more repair. Absolutely, but he's not getting it. It's too much damage. The burrow falls. Supply stuck. All right. Is he getting another burrow far up in the back? Not yet, though. The third demolisher is coming, and if you can protect them, there's not gonna be repair against this. But the stronghold is falling as well. Is TH tacking behind this? No. It's masonry upgrade, but that's about it. Otherwise, he's reliant on his first hero and footman and towers. One more thing, by the way. The shop is gone as well, so this oh, yeah. one heal self he has in the inventory is the last, last one he's gonna have. Unless he makes a new shop very, very soon. Three demolishers, though, is a hell of a lot of damage. If he can keep him alive. That is. Once again, the glorious micro of TH with his footman man, saving them all with like 10, 20 HP. Absolutely marvelous. The lava spawn once again will not split. We haven't seen a single split just yet, but this is a lot of reach and Blade Master's diving in to cancel most of it. Here we go. Third one cancelled. Very good. Alright. He's gonna get one more lava spawn here, perhaps. Yep. He's close to level 3. That might help with the increased critical strike damage. The grunts are protecting the peon line, but it's so hard to keep these demolishers alive. Only now the next burrow is coming up. Firelord needs to be careful. He's trying to bait the blade master to come into range of the towers. Again, if the fire lord dies, it doesn't really well, it doesn't matter, but it's not really the end of the game. If the blade master falls, of course, it's super GG. And if the stronghold falls, then it's GG as well, because then there's no income anymore for Lin, and it's dropping lower and lower and lower. Blade Master has more clarity, he has a potion, he has to do something. He needs to, I don't know, pull the focus, one. but there's only three towers left. I think it can hold yeah, this now. We're down, exactly, and the towers are not focusing on the stronghold at the moment. Is he making the, uh, the defense work here in the end? More militia coming from the main, but the duration is almost over. Almost no mining anymore by Lin. But the footies are getting slaughtered. Look at the splash damage from the demolishers. That is correct, man. Also, the next uh, set of foot uh, of, of, of peasants there attacked over and over. But the Blade Master needs some healing. There's some kind of break for TH now. Who was just on. Th oh, now the lava spawn popped, and this is a lot of damage. This is dangerous for Lin, losing the first demolisher, maybe even the second one. Okay, that is enough here. But that's. Small mistake. He could have prevented that lava spawn from splitting had he focused yeah. it quicklier. But of course, there's so many things to manage here in the Orc base. It's a very stressful game for Lin, but he's making it 
work really, really well so far. Blade Master, by the way, more than level four already. He would love some claws or That's something, sick. but of course he doesn't have the space or the money or anything to buy them. But yeah, only two guard towers. It seems like almost he can repair against this damage. I agree. Still no tech behind this. The area of effect damage of the Demolisher hits the Footman. Another one splatters into pieces. Blade Master is again attacking the Fire Lord here. Critical Strike level 2, as you mentioned. One lucky strike, and then he's gone. But Fortuna is not with him, and so the Fire Lord survives for now. Still, uh, well, level 2 now, but all the mana will go into Lava Spawn, so it doesn't really matter. I love how the Grunts are protecting the Demolishers in front. The Bouncers, once again, doing their job. So, does TH have another attack in him? Like, I mean, it's an attack anyways, but you know what I mean. Another commitment to the back. Because if he doesn't commit to these demolishers, it looks like Lin has stabilized. Yeah, he's about to break this, man. Deep red HP range for the two guard towers. One more attack and at least one fault. Maybe the second as well. Oh. They're trying their best oh to repair, God. but it's too late, man. GG seems to be called soon. Yeah, what Without are you doing? A tower rush, but all your towers die. And the Blade Master's four and a half! Alright, desperation play. Commit to the Demolishers, kill them, make new towers. But it's not working! It's GG! The king of tower defense. Lin does it again. Holy shit. That was so well done. I will never forget the desperate moment of Infi when we were sitting in a taxi in uh, Yin Shuan in 2016. He looked at me with a sad face and he said, uh, I love Tower Rush, but Lin... Against Lin, it doesn't work. I don't know what to do. And this was exactly why. Three weeks ago, he was slaughtered by this push. On this very map. Less than five minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Give him a little bit of time. Give him some time to adjust. Figure something new out. Or old strategies, bring him back. And here's Lin. There was not a big mistake by TH, I guess. This was the normal tower push play. With great micro on the footman, he saved a lot, healed them up again, so... It was just the right idea of Lin to go for the two burrows, to go for the fast tech nevertheless, and then fully commit to this, uh, to demolishes. Yeah, that was so sick, man. As you said, barely any mistakes at all. Maybe one by Lin not killing the lava spawn that was like one hit away from dying. But that was so well done. Two grunts into double racks into mass demolishers. Make a new shop once the uh, heal salves are gone. You don't need it before. Spend the money on uh, repairing instead. Always the right amount of repair for the most part. Like that one demolisher got surrounded, but then again was so well done by TH. Yeah. The stronghold HP at one point, but he held on, held on. That was so sick, man. That was uh, awesome, awesome Warcraft. Indeed. And also, like, what he focused at the, at the beginning we thought like will he really let this towers just come up like there was maybe one attack against the guard towers but that was it and it was the right call the guard towers in the end it, it, it were only three so it wasn't enough to kill the stronghold the choices were made right by Lin. We had two new subs here during our game or after. Uh, Tryhard59 with a first time sub and Risky Rascal with a five month resub saying, Having fun watching games with you as always. Thank you, man. AZ is next here at Back to Warcraft, map number two between Lin and TH. Amazonia Remo. Don't forget to go ready. Oh. Amazonia. Yes. Um before but as far as i can remember only on tier two fire lord not really a thing here and this is one of the better archmage maps and you guys have guessed why we mention this every single game it feels like when there's an archmage it's about level three it's all about level three this is the second easiest map to pull that off easiest being twisted meadows of course and then i would say az or am i missing something i don't think i am so if you want to prevent the am from level getting from getting level three which is very important you have to be super duper on point with your Grunt and Blade Master scouting. So yeah, I think that's a good counter pick uh, from TH's side. Yes, I agree. Terrana stand is vetoed, by the way, uh, from Lin, so you can pick that. Also a good map for that. But we are good to go, as it seems. Just waiting for the admins to start. This is the 1-0. It's a best of five, so it's not that bad. But I guess what it does to you mentally is... 
they had the strategy finally against Orc again. And now it's shattered to pieces, as it seems. Or was it just not Which I'm good very enough? happy about, by the way. <laughs> Screw or was the it, Tower Ashes man. Or was it just not good enough by, by TH, and now it's his time to change something up? That's a good question. Maybe he did see some flaws in his game in hindsight. We certainly didn't see any. I, but TH I think, like, a... at the beginning, with the first lava spawn, he attacked the buildings only, not going for the peons at all. So the first set of lava spawns, they didn't split. Not the first one and not the second one. And usually you really want to spiral out of control with the fire lot. So I guess that is something that you can do. Yeah, I guess so. Um, if you go for the peon line in the back, they will be able to attack those. But I think he also wanted to protect his towers against the grunts. So they stayed next to the towers. But yeah, that, that might be something that could have perhaps been done better. But anyways... Map number two, Amazonia. We have, we have Lin 1-0 in the lead. It's time for TH to come back now on his map pick. I'm kind of surprised he didn't go for TM with it not having been vetoed. True. But, but okay. AZ, um, it's going to be an Archmage, of course. MK would be pure insanity here. Maybe he would do that against, uh, I don't know, Fast or someone, but not against <laughs> The last result of the two was in October of 2017 during the Africa TV Warcraft League Season 2. There it was the group stage and Lin won it kind of easily 2-0. Before that they met in June of 2017 where it was a 3-2 in favor of Lin the To Be The King show match. And then the first encounter in 2017 was the Africa TV Warcraft League Season 1 quarterfinal that was also won by Lin. So as I mentioned before, more than one year where TH couldn't beat him since December 18, 2016. And it doesn't look that good for him, but there's always a chance to come back, especially when your opponent plays a Farseer. Uh, okay. Remo we've is on, stunned. <laughs> we've seen this on TM in the past. We've seen it quite a bit on PTR, of course. I guess it makes sense on AZ because it's so hard to pimp your blade. But usually it feels to me, um, you want to play Farseer when it's really dangerous to get tower rushed early. Don't think that's the case here. Okay, interesting. I mean, we are both a fan. Chain wave, one of the most beautiful combos in the game. Yeah, but you need wave and chain lightning on a pretty high level to make it work against mass casters. I don't yeah, really see that work on Amazonia because you won't have the time for it. Yeah, I need level 4 and 3, that's true. It's a lot of experience uh, you require. Nice lightning shield creep here by Lin. He knows to do it as well. Not only the Night Elves have this trick reserved for themselves. He gets a ring of protection. Decent, I guess, because he's so squishy. A little bit of tankiness just helps him. Cloak of Shadows for TH Zero, of course, creeps the same spot. But yeah, this is the first little adjustment. The lightning shield trick usually doesn't... Forces are under right. attack. He With a footy! With a freaking footman, TH is a madman. And so there's already a big experience gap between the two. Damn, man, Lin must be kicking himself. With four units around there, you really shouldn't let that happen. But you know, once every 10 games, something silly like this happens. So now the Farsi are pretty far away from level two. That keeps him from level one chain lightning, which is. Yeah, it's... Not that amazing, to be honest. But here we go. At uh, TH, excuse me. Moving into the Org base, he's too late to cancel the second bowler, but perhaps the third one, only if he wants to commit, however, which it doesn't look like he wants to. Wolves in the main base for the human, looking for some peasant kills. They're definitely gonna get one. Shouldn't be more, though. Yeah, it's important for, for TH to see that this is a fire Farseer, of course. So the Arcane Tower is up, and once the Arcane Tower is up, Wolf Harass, not really possible anymore, maybe against the Lumber Workers, but that's it. And I really love what he's doing here. It, going for the easy creep spot here to prevent level 2, TH immediately capitalizing from this one last city guard. Finally level 2 for him. <laughs> it is level 2 for Lin, man. This was the last hit revenge. But he got the Water Elemental, right? Ah, yeah, true. Sorry, yeah. I think. So, um, Lumber Mill is coming up, Militia are running out, but not for the Tower Rush during Tech, that, that would be uh, largely crazy. 
No, he's going for creeping instead for the Murlocs, as we've seen so many times before. Would that be level 3 AM? I don't think quite yet, but he is very, very... Uh, your connection is crapping out a little bit here. I don't know why, but couldn't hear you for a second. Everything is healed up for Lin, but he is facing a 6 footman army, plus a super close to level 3 Archmage, Man, TH prepared basically perfectly for this upcoming tower push. And when he's level 3 with the Beastmaster, this can be very scary. And so far, I don't really see the upside of this Farseer. Uh, let's see. Not yet at least. Uh, definitely a damage, a lack of damage here. But with the Wolves, it can make up for it, but the Micro is still too great. He wants to get a kill, I think. Lin has to resummon the wolves exactly to not give him this experience that he needs. That's so ex so difficult here to keep them from dying. It's going to get a little more easy with 1.29. How much more experience does he need? Only 14. That is one single wolf. Lin cannot give this up. Oh, and he can't give up the murlocs either. Such a tough position now for him to be in. And he kind of needs to go back to get some clarities. Oh, if they all oh, lasted. That was nice. Brilliant. Uh, he needs some clarities as well, so they play ring, ring around the Rosie, but at some point TH can just creep something or yeah. he attacks and, with a Beastmaster. And he over. saved so much mana on the Archmage, look at it, he has more than 300. He steals the last hit again, dude. <laughs> he does such a great job of keeping him at level 3, but it only works for so long, you know, you can't prevent it forever and there it is. And this is a scary ass push. But no militia yet. He's not calling them. It's only five footmen remaining. Quillbeast are coming in though. Dispel is coming and Beastery for Ensnare of course. But he has to keep the towers up. No. Ah, TC is out already. I thought no second hero. What? This is ma madness. But no, TC is out. But with only with Shockwave 1 and that doesn't hurt too much. And the boss are really gonna die. The good thing here is uh, the tier 2 buildings are up at least. So, so far only one borough lost. So hard here to uh, chase down these footies though. The grunts only coming in now. Two were missing. I wonder where they were. Well, in the middle of the map somewhere, I guess so many summons here and more and more will be coming. Three quill beasts, one water elemental, a second one will be coming in. Spirit Link is now available. We have more walkers coming. Adept, of course, still fairly far away. The grunts are pretty tanky though, thanks to the Spirit Link. Oh. And he's saving so many of his units here. I think so far he only lost a single peon. I like that he moved the Spirit Walker to Ethereal form so the Quillbees can't attack it anymore. Next one falls, but yeah, he used that magic damage well against the Footman to scare him away. So TH is down to only his heroes and the summons. And Lin defends this. It's working pretty push. well. The Shockwave level 1, of course, isn't the greatest, but the TC has pretty respectable right click damage, something that gets uh, overlooked oftentimes. But the Grunt in the back will finally fall despite Spirit Link being there. One down. And the Archmage there. with more and more water elemental. He's gonna have another one in just a moment. Yeah, he needs that burrow because now he's supply stuck with the next raider coming out. Also, the summon here being saved again. Not too much experience on those levels, but but the spirit link is already helping, and also the heal waves, uh, heal selves on those walkers are important. Two second attack. heroes are battling it out now. There's a snare. Does he have the mana for some nukes? Wave is gonna be there in a second, but that's not enough damage. Speed scroll, he wants to get this kill. With a wave, can he get it? I think he will. And there it is, executed. Did he get the experience? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. The walkers are back to full health. TH is again crumbling under the pressure of Lin's defense, but next burrow is down. And that's so important. Where are the casters? Here they are, double arcane sanctum, and hero is coming back, priests are there, sorcerers are coming. The second push by TH will be more devious than the first one. And this is the difference, guys. This is the difference from level 2 to level 3 Archmage in the early mid game. It is absolutely amazing. Finally, Lin stabilizes. Finally, the pressure subsides. Uh oh, AM might be forced into the TP here. One ensnare, two ensnares, and that should be an easy surround. There it is. All right. So, second hero lost, first hero lost. He has a good army so far. He has all he needs. Ensnare. Uh, walkers are there, three of them. And. Usually we only mention Spirit Link and this spell, which are of course important, but this is magic damage and this is almost as much damage as a destroyer would do without mana. And the footmen fall to it, the casters are 
fall into it pretty easily. We shouldn't underestimate this. So TH needs some time to gather his army, gather his troops, and then do a second coming. But in the meantime, Lin is creeping up and his levels are getting better and better. Where's the first here? Oh, he's in the base. Okay, I thought maybe he was going to go for some harassment. Yeah, he's level 3. TC, almost level 3 himself. Yes. If he creeps up the Murlocs, he's already there. He can take this safely. He went for Wolves too, though, right? Yes, he yeah. went for Wolves too. He sends the Farsia away. Not only for the merchant, but also for the murlocs. This experience spread is really well done. As you can see on the Archmage, he does the same, but he's already 3.6. Beastmaster is far away from level 3. Well, this Taskmaster helped, but far away from Quilby's level 2. So the Borough is going to be finishing only now. For all of this time, Lin was not able to produce, but now he's able to again. Sentry Ward sees the Orc coming in. Does he want to take this fight so far outside his base here, Lin? He has one scroll of speed. One mana potion on the TC as well. I think you're a fan of this, right? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Let's see how many... We will see a lot of waves, but how many chain lightnings will we see? That's the question as well. Oh, he stole that. Oh, the missed that. Mentioned chain lightning. Yeah, the early mana potion, I'm a big fan. Especially once you hit level 2. Oh, the wave. So Could be great here. They're lighting up perfectly. Boom! There we go. Half HP already gone from the buffer units that are the militia and the duration is running out in a bit. Lin seems comfortable enough to take this fight and he kills the first unit here. I think he wants to take out a few targets here and then speed scroll away. Everything's dropping low for him. Hell out of here. Chain wave. We saw it here. A lot of different targets. So... TH needs more healing. He lost a lot. He's down to 46. His militia support is gone. And the rest of it is sent back. So he can't set the towers up here. Especially not against chain wave combo. Because as you saw, it cuts the HP of the workers in half. And if you do it twice with maybe a clarity in between, then boom, this is defended. But TH is taking his time. Getting up to level 4. At level 3, this is a major upgrade for him. Especially with the Quill Beast against the walkers. But he has 4 of them. Look for the shockwave. He's waking up the creeps! How smart is this? He's gonna lose a uh, raider for that, but easily worth it. And now, such a bad position for the human. And he doesn't have the TP anymore, remember? He used it before to save his archmage. But he's making this a decent stand as the creeps retreat back to their camp. Takes out one more grunt. 46 supply for TH. And a raider, a miss rally. Rare mistake from Lin. He's at 47. Does he have another scroll of speed to get out of this? He does not. He has the Endurance Aura though, that helps a little bit. Quillbeast are following, Dispel against the Slow, and Snare against the Quillbeast, uh, so the heal selves keep on running. Another Raider misrallied. Olin! Is this concentration fading or what? Bash Bear! No Hawk! This will make you very happy, I guess. Uh, he doesn't have Bash yet, but soon, you know, soon. <laughs> Once he hits level 4. And now he's moving forward. Swall of Healing, by the way, is still there. That's a very important... For TH not having used that before. He gave up a lot of militia for this, but he kept, held on to the scroll. And here we go again. TC needs to find some big waves. He's trying to position himself, and there it is! Hitting five of the casters, a lot of damage, but they're not being picked off. Chain Lightning comes in, but that's only level one, but the next wave, that one's gonna hurt, and it's cooling down. And and the Breakers Watch can't it. really attack him here. He is the next one, but the Beastmaster's there with a heal scroll. That was the final one. We don't... Oh, do we have the mana potion still? Yes, we do. A good spread by TH. Now, the Raiders are about to fall. They find their targets, but that's about it. Level 4 on the fast here. Oh, my God. Chain Lightning is going to be horrendous for TH if he casts it. Here we go. Oh. Everything is super duper low. Crimson Mask everywhere. And the Walker should be able to pick him off. One. Two. Ah, the damage isn't too great, so I guess it's only one. But well, that's a lot of kills here for Lin, and he's looking for more. He has some ensnares, one at least, to work with still. And he's making this hold work, and look at the ethereal forms, man. He's saving so gorgeous. many of his units. It's absolutely gorgeous, not only this fight, but also during the first push, during the fight on the upper left, and now in this one, this ethereal form hotkey is uh, kind of the MVP for, for Lin here so far. And the levels, man, his TC is close to yeah. 4. You remember when you said, well, he needs high levels for that to make it work. Yeah, I don't well, think that's too likely. You can't really expect that. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, you're right. He has the two levels in the nuke now, and he's very close to level 4 TC, which is also going to be good for everything. He's still 10 supply down, 
And there is Invo Potion. Whoa! That hurt. He wasn't fast enough with the heal scroll. He has one on the Archmage. Also, two Invo Potions. Isn't that like a little too much? I mean, he plays without a TP, so I guess Hero Focus could always be an option. So better safe than sorry, but I wonder if it's worth the 360 gold. Oh, nice. The summon run by actually killed one of the burrows, so now Lin's supply stuck again. And he needs mana on his Farseer desperately. Also on the TC, only one wave remaining. Is this a brute force win for TH after all? Next shockwave, not hitting too much here. Good dodge, but this is level 4. TC is kind of low though. Needs a potion oh. if he wants to stay in there. Gets it. He's dropping low still. The potion's on cooldown. Is he just gonna die here to the right clicks? But also the farce, uh, the Beastmaster in trouble. Seven second invo, it's gonna be over soon. Dust being used here to prevent the uh, invisibility from coming in. And this should be the kill, right? And snare, focus, heal stroll, shockwave. Where's the chain lightning? He doesn't have the mana. Level up, bash bear comes out. But the- Invis save! No, he gets it with the last shot that was flying. He was down to five. But yeah, the bash bear Lin still calls for the GG. The masses of TH are overwhelming. He never gave up. He continued to fight. And at the end, this summon drive-by, as you called it, keeping Lin's supply stack, and then he can't fight this anymore. Reproduction for human casters, really, really quick. Lin did a great defense with, once again, almost no mistakes. But it was just too much, man. The resiliency of TH equalizes the series. You just crept out for me there. Are you still there? I'm there, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Uh, seems like Discord is a little wonky today. Um, yeah, really cool to see the chain wave. We both love it to bits. I think one of the biggest problems with going away from the Blade Master is the breakers. How do you kill those goddamn breakers? I maybe yes. saw one of them die in this game. You know, one answer to that could be Torrens Neo. <laughs> <laughs> but more realistically, when the Blade Master is not there, obviously Chain Wave isn't going to do anything to the Breakers. So I guess the only solution is Grunts, which are meh, okay, but nothing more. Yeah, so I think the Breakers are the real uh, issue in that in that game. Good hold. Cool for Lim to experiment here. We have seen that before in California at the Warcraft Invitational when, remember guys, he defeated Happy with a Shadow Hunter first, <laughs> where we all collectively lost our minds. Experiment experimentation didn't work so well here in the semifinal. Map number two goes to TH. That's the way it was supposed to be on his counterpick map. Next is going to be Lin with his counterpick map. During that game, by the way, we had a big donation. Thank you very much. Paul Patin 88 with a 22 euros and some change. This is my football. I never got watching any form of sports until back to Warcraft. Keep up the good work, guys. Wow. Thank you so much, man. That's, That's really nice really, to hear. Indeed, man. Really, really cool to hear that uh, this is your your first competitive sport that you're watching and you learn with us. Pretty damn nice uh, to see new faces here in the Warcraft scene after all those years. What's the next map? Certainly not Twisted. <clears throat> Terranus is banned. Echo Isles and AZ, we saw that before. So Turtle Rock is possible, if not banned. Last Refuge is possible. I think AI, what was it? Did you AI, say yeah. yeah. AI could be vetoed, but not sure. <clears throat> but I, I don't think so. It could also be a good Fire Lord map, so CH won't veto that, I think. But I think you can play Fire Lord almost anywhere, right? Yeah, if the I mean, not, not, not on Twisted, of course, but... I think when we see Fire Lord on AI, it's more like out of desperation, you know? <laughs> what the hell else am I supposed to do? Let's go Fire Lord. Still waiting for the invites. A lot of players are already in the room. I hope they don't forget about us. But I don't think so. Ah, there we go. Total Rocket is! Yep, very predictable counter pick as well. So when you Orc, you always have, when, when you're any race uh, for the matchups, you have to go down the list. For Orc, that is level three Archmage. Is that hard? Yes, it is. Tower Rush, is that hard? Yes, it is. And that's already two things that's great here on TR. And then you have the added benefit of great for Blade Master pimping. Also really good for like consumables, lots of grunts creeping, medium armor and all that good jazz. 
We, by the way, have to use a watch here because there's no slots available. Oh, too bad. It's okay. That's okay. Gonna be a little behind, but that's uh, not too worry. I'm really glad the games are holding up. Uh, I mean, I guess if you wanna... No, that's not true. Anyways, what I wanted to say was the games are holding up in terms of quality. I feel like yes. both the fullest today, they're both in shape. They're both giving it their all. See, maybe not clowning around a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say so. Maybe he also wants to keep like TH on his toes, you know? making him unsure of what first hero it's going to be. Yes. But then again, after that game, I would be greatly surprised to see Farseer again. Unless on Twisted. On Twisted, I think Farseer is actually... Yeah, I agree. On Twisted, you can play it. Um, we have seen Focus versus Romantic doing that. So the Farseer has a little renaissance here recently in the shades of patch 1.29 that is coming uh, pretty damn soon. Sooner than some would expect, I guess. So then... A little more variety for the starting heroes of the Orc, which uh, is always good. Variety That's and gonna, diversity. It's going to be so cool once the patch hits. Of course, uh, first of all, being able to play on Battle.net with lots of people. And please God, not too many hackers. But for us, especially uh, casting the Chinese tournaments and also Jera Cup and so on. Eh, I still say Jera Cup, you know, European <laughs> tournaments. With the new changes, uh, I wonder what that's going to look like. I wonder also... Who's going to be the one to be uh, most like uh, open to innovation? You know what I mean? Certainly not Orc Worker. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the one I thought of. <laughs> um, like for Undeads, there is so much room to experiment. Yeah. But who is a very experimental player for Undead? Mm, is it I, 1 to 0? I, I, think don't know. I think it's rather WFZ than 1 to 0, to be honest. I don't know. 1 to 0. Picks up stuff and perfects it, but he rarely comes up with stuff on his own. That's my experience with him. <clears throat> yeah, might be. But he was pretty much the one who brought the Fire Lord into the meta back then, right? Against Orc. Lucifer, I think, could be a really good innovator, actually. Really? Yeah. Dude, he played Lich first against Human... He played Fire Lord <laughs> third against human with like Rain of Fire against the towers. And I think Lucifer is one of the biggest ones to look out for. Okay. Well, with Lucifer, you never know if it's just trolling or it's, if he it's, takes it's it so mean how how do you talk about him like he's not a player to be taken seriously. He oh, is, but Lucifer. you know, he, he has his ups and downs, and like in the past year, it was more downs than ups for sure. I think, of course, Moon. We have to mention Moon. There's no way around Moon when it comes to creativity. Yeah. Did he, by the way, make it through the qualifier? He did, right? For what? Into the playoffs, I mean. Lucifer? Or Moon? No, both. Moon. Both, yeah, both did. Of course, we're going to continue casting tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday with the GCS qualifiers for Asia. The March race is concluding and we have the European Open qualifier as well, where you can take part. You can sign up at gcseu.backtowarcraft.com and uh, play as saw Todd signing up. Would be so great if he makes it through the playoffs, man. What a story. Almost a Creolophil story in like smaller scale. And game's up. Do you see it in watch or? Nope. But okay, then just you. follow me and everything is all right. <clears throat> I, I follow. Ready to work. So, as you said, Ready. Turtle Rock map number three. Neo, what's this turning into right now? <laughs> it is turning into a best of three, Remo. And I'm having some production oh, yeah. issues, so you have to cover for a second. So, Turtle Rock, um, what strategy is the human going to go for? Because usually what the orc goes for is pretty much set in stone. Now, this statement has been thrown out the water with the last uh, game, with there being farcier, but again, I think that's pretty unlikely to occur again. But TH, what's he going to do? Tower Rush, really hard. Expansion, 
pretty much impossible. Yeah. So what are you left with? Um, go for a one base map control kind of game. A play style that brought yours almost to the victory of WCA 2015. This is still the pl play style that I prefer seeing the most. I think from a viewer perspective, it's the most enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Not historically what the Chinese humans have preferred. It feels like against Orc though in the past. But they maybe here on this rushing. map he's going to be forced into this play style. Yeah, they were always rushing. Um, at least as far as I can remember. Also a lot of Beastmaster play. Like this legendary game on this map of Infi there. and Fly. But with the invisible the summons. Oh, it was so it was, good. It was so sick. Like where Infi had no business at all of winning that game. But he doesn't care because he's Infi. Yeah, Infi, I don't know, man. He's like the Chuck Norris of Warcraft. You can give him something, like one footman, one militia, and he makes it work. Don't you mean MacGyver? <laughs> MacGyver, yeah, what did I say? Chuck Norris, MacGyver. Yeah, Chuck Norris. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. I was like, what? I was expecting a roundhouse kick. I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's more Todd style. So yeah, for the Orc, of course, if he has the time, there is so much to creep. There are so many great items. Um, that he can find and it's kind of easy to creep as well with the turtles on the back Plus for his heroes. I guess the consumables are more important than for the humans are Like the four big ones on the back This is a pretty unusual creep up by TH isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's green camp into merchant So for the first green camp you need very few peasants So then you can tech fast and then you can go for the merchant. That's really smart. It's kind of risky though. Imagine a Blade Master showing up here. That's, yeah, but you can you can lose the Ogre Magi, lose the item, lose the ward, lose the experience, lose three peasants after. This does look like quite the risk. We've seen this recently, right? Where one player lost everything. Ooh, really close. But Lin survives here. Talisman of Evasion, meh. Certainly, uh, the Pendant of Energy is way better here. One more Water Elemental. For the Chinese, level two and a half already, that's and the tech has started. Attack. The grunt is harassing here, killing one person, but that's about it. And if he's getting surrounded there, that would be pretty bad. But I is doubt TH it. actually getting a level three fast archmage, where it's used to, it's supposed to be an impossible fast level three archmage map? Yes. Like and why is the blade master? Down at the bottom right, I guess he was expecting TH to take the creep cam, which is less predictable. But the double uh, mind game here, TH. Oh, he needs to get this last hit, by the way, Blade Master. Otherwise, he's level three, and he should be able to. Oh, he's... it's close. Oh, it hurt him. He gets it though. Okay, not a flawless creep route by TH, but he has boots and a pendant and more the HP. So are under attack. this is not that easy for Lin to pull off. His tech is almost done. He gets a warmel in the back, so he's aware. This will be a tower rush again, and the slumber mill is coming up and points towards it. All right, TH with a little bit of greed, calculated, I guess, gets the fast level three again. Turtle Rock, so hard to get this, but he did get it. Blake Master was not harassing him. Blake Master was, I guess, you could say, greedy, trying to go for his own ogre mage instead of uh, scouting more and looking for more Blade harassment. Under attack. So pretty good early game here, all things considered. Like fast level three and fast tech for the human. This is a this is the dream. So far, it's the dream. But we've seen Lin with crazy recoveries and crazy defenses. But certainly, this is not a great position for him. And then it would be match points for TH oh already. God. Oh my God, he's gonna lose both production buildings, isn't he? He doesn't have much mana here for the AM. Well, not too much. He's gonna have two water elementals, at least not three. But yeah, this lodge is gonna get cancelled. The Beastmaster is here. Oh man, this is looking rough. This is looking real rough. The peons are coming too late for the repair. They can't even reach. This Boro is dead. Perfect game plan by TH for this map. Like, this is not supposed to be a human map, and this is by far the most one sided we've seen all day. Oh my god, he's gonna lose the second ball. Oh shit. Alright, so you're gonna have a bestiary. Who cares? You don't have burrows. Yeah. Shadowhunter is out. Can he go for a hero kill somehow? He needs to reach, but he's too slow. Gets only one footman. That's totally fine. Uses a hex on the footman as well. Oh baby. I would greatly expect a tower push to be coming in very, very soon. 
Oh man, TH. Like, after map one, I did not expect a match like this. Never. But he just doesn't care, right? He doesn't give a single fuck about what happened in the past. Wow, did you see the four misses? Talisman of Evasion can be pretty good. <laughs> Oh man, he's gonna need 100% misses here to win this game, it seems. I mean, it's not over by any means, but Lin can't produce anything. He still supplies like no borrow, still no lodge. This is last borrow. Please don't lose this borrow, dude, please. No. Alright, here comes the repair. And we have to say, like the first two borrows he lost, the repair there was pretty slow. Maybe he could have done a better job there. It seems like this Boro, at the very least, is surviving, though. Trying to go for the Beastmaster with the scroll of speed. This should be the kill. He has two of them, by the way. TP's out with a Beastie, even keeping the second hero alive. And now, Casas are ready. Shop is up. He can go for some Ivories. And then he can go for a Tower Push. Let's go, boys. But he's not getting the Ivories yet. I see Lin's resources are frozen. Let me just fix this in a second. Uh, if if TH really wanted to, you could expand right now, I think. I'll but why not finish the game right. sooner? I really think this is a... This should be the game, shouldn't it be? For TH. Lin is continuing to creep. This will be level 3 for the blade. Has to be the crit, I feel. He's holding on to the skill point for now. Yeah, it is crit. And it's crit. Militia are coming over. Police has been called and they're ready. Archmage has good mana. Is under siege. Beastmaster has good mana and is tanky. And in the meantime, the Quill Beast are scouting. Finally, Lin has Burrows again, but he still can't produce for now. 30 supply versus 42. He needs a miracle. A proxy lodge at the Ogre Camp would have been really cool, but there's no PR over there. Boro seem to be surviving. He has lots of money here, Lin, so he can go for a lot of potions, but no real army. And here come the towers. No ivories, as we said. Blade Master has to take care. There is a... Okay, he's going Headhunters, uh, but no Kodo yet. Usually with this you go early Kodo, but you want the control, I guess, to be able to go for Hero Focus if you see the chance. And he's wrecking Almost. a lot of peasants. Yeah, and more and more experience for the f Blade dropping low. Has the invul though. Pops it here. And heals selves onto the invul. Mm, that's always a nice move that the orcs can go for. Alright, one tower has been cancelled. Second tower, cancelled. Can he get the third one as well? He has a lot of damage here, and he will be able to get it. But he paid for this with a lot of hit points. And there's no healing on the Blade Master, and he's in Windwalk. So... The Shadowhunter is hurt as well, but he's, he's going for the hero focus. Does he have the damage to knock down the Blade Master with this? Oh, he opens it up and the Blade Master is able to just run away. There was no invisible. He would have been dead. He's standing right next to the shop. Can go for a potion. Does so. Messed that up just a little bit. Thinking he had the block. Didn't quite have it. Kills. If the SH gets level 3, maybe he can make this work. It's not that far away, but his units are suffering. He needs more mana as well. Using the mana potion here, he needs a big heal wave. Raider falls, but he gets two units in return. This grunt will fall too. Oh, but look oh. at this. Everything's so low. Yeah. Oh yeah, my goodness. Yeah. He needs time, but he doesn't have that time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. This kill is level three. No. Nope. The Boro denies it. Oh shit. <laughs> How unfortunate. The Kodo is there now. Blade Master damage significantly raised. But there's more and more units falling. He can't heal against it. He wanted to wait for level 3. Finally he gets it. But it's only one heal wave remaining. Okay, and no clarity. No towers yet. So it seems like he has some time here. The shop is still up and available. Not too low. Oh, oh Beastmaster in trouble again. Does he get this around this time? He needs to get it, but he's too slow. To be fair, he was slowed down. So it was hard to get into position. Speaking of positions, he has to die for those towers he's as they're faster. upgrading. He's so far forward, like... He's really a dangerous. masochist, right? He's flirting with this around, man. <laughs> Is... Dude, are you serious? Is Lin really holding this? How? He had one burrow. One! There's still an overwhelming mass of sorceresses with decent mana. But yeah, the Blade Master's close to level 4. And the Beastmaster's still one and a half. He's fighting him 
back. This is so ridiculous. Are you serious, man? Hoping for some crits here. It's not gonna happen though. Well, he gets one, but that's not good enough. Towers cancelled again. All right, boys, let's go for some heal cells and some clarities and stuff. Even a lodge coming up now, which looks like it's gonna be finishing this time. There's no way he can die for this. Plus three attack on the headhunters. Great against towers, great against casters. He gets rid of the summons fairly early as well. I like that. All right, looks like uh, Lin wants to look for more kills here. One in snare almost means one kill. There's another one and a couple more and this blade will be level four. SH of course always has to provide healing. More clarities from the shop, has more heal webs. Blade Master, there's so little damage here. And you know what? The talisman, I have to agree with you this time, Leo. It's pretty nice. <laughs> like in this situation, it is, it is such a great item. There's so many units hitting on your hero and therefore you miss, oh, a, uh, you miss a lot. But here's the Archmage again. Not really surrounding, and he pays the price for it. Two units, but he's going for the hero kill anyway. No potion anymore. Does he have no wind walk? Oh, he has one wind walk, but nothing to get out. Third time that Lin misses a hero kill. Well, that looked like a bit of an overextension from Lin. Like, why did he have to go for that AM? He lost one raider for this. Yeah, bloodlust. This was just bloodlust of Lin. Brain out, just the instincts. Maybe he didn't see the healing potion there on the AM or something. I'm not quite sure. But the Lodge is done. He's gonna have Spirit Link soon. There's not too many walkers yet, uh, breakers, excuse me, to steal it all the time. But now with the two forces he lost, thanks to that overextension, it may be a little harder now to hold on to the shop. And this is a lot of casters by now. And finally level two for the Beastmaster. He can summon the Hawk, so no wind walk really possible anymore. The forces of TH, they grow. And with the breakers, he does have a blocker line. He's Lin is doing a good job sniping those casters. But will oh, it nice be enough? Speed scroll. He's trying to eat something. Doesn't get the first munch. But the second one will be there. And he runs back as well. Good Kodo control. Does he get back to safety? Uh, still kind of exposed. Needs to have those Boros help again. And no spirit link on the Blade Master. Oh boy, the casters can kill the walkers, of course. Even if they're in, in ethereal form. <laughs> This Beastmaster kind of feels yeah, home in the in bottom the same left. Again, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, third time. Potion again for Lin. Oh my god, how is he holding on here? 20 supply down is Lin. But his heroes are pretty sick. I wonder why he's, like, he can't go for a hero focus, right? He's trying a little, but TH's control and positioning is just too good. Oh, Beastmaster again. Is it finally time to die now? Seems like the end snare is on cooldown, and there's Invis. No potion. The Blade Master is so super low. I love how the Quill Beast is constantly killing the regen. Yeah. And I think this shop is almost out of mana now. He has been using so many potions and clarities. Yeah. And that's an issue. And yeah, there's none on the SH. Again? Like He's trying to move. He's looking to buy the last thing. That's only a clarity. He didn't have the mana for mana potion, but I think it wasn't in there anyways. And the shop's gone. Yeah. And that is really scary. No potions anymore. He is not supply stuck, but he lacks the resources. Archmage is safe in the back. There's Invis. He could even build a shop back there. His production buildings are falling as well. Lin has one more attack in him. This needs to be a Hail Mary. Or not! <laughs> TH man coming back again in an impressive fashion. This creep route was something else, man. Yeah. Again, it was definitely a risky creep route, but when it works, it works super well. Yeah. Almost got denied. He wasn't really level three when he wanted it, but had to use one creep more, and then the pressure with an early level 3 Archmage um, towards the Orc base, if you hit that timing, cancel the production buildings, it's so hard to come back. Still impressive how Lin managed to survive for so long. This one over... Do, do you think the one over extension was too much? He basically lost two units for that. One Grunt and one Raider. 
With more one more grunt and one more raider, would he have been able to hang on against uh, ten more supply? I don't know. Would have been uh, closer though, certainly. During that game, we had another resub from C Sick TC with the two months. Thank you very much, my man. Two one now and match points for the three eggs. We go into last refuge. This could be. The first win of TH against Lin since December 2016. If things go well for him. Last Refuge was the map where Infi tower rushed Lin with the Fire Lord again. And he held on for 15 minutes despite losing two grunts in the early game. Is it again the tower push? The Fire Lord tower push as we saw on Echo Isles? Or will he switch it up? And play standard. Yeah, so far he has never gone into that one base uh, MK style again, if we want to call that standard. This would be pretty much the best map to do it on, though. MK, of course, needs safety, creeping, needs quick creeping on tier 2 to get to level 3 quickly. And this is pretty easily achievable here with the Murkam in the laboratory. But then again... This doesn't seem to be TH's style. I'm really interested to see what's coming up next. Lin, I think he's looking at the replay right now. Maybe wondering how quick was that level three, uh, how easily was that level yeah. three Archmage accessible? <clears throat> By the way, that opening on uh, TR, I don't think it's ever again going to work against Lin from TH. I think from nope. now on, uh, he's going to scout against that and he's going to try to punish that. He's in the game now. We're ready to go. TH one map away from the final, and Lin has to come back. Exactly. There is a game for third, and prize money for the third player. If he ends up fourth, there's no prize money for him even in this league. If you reach the final, then you have $1,500 guaranteed, and the chance to boost it up to $4,700. Very, uh, yeah, the most of the prize money goes to the winner here, more than a half. Pretty top heavy. A lot of uh, motivation, I guess, for the first place finisher. And since it's not Infi and TH, they're probably going to split the money. So here we go. <laughs> Map on. number four. Very early on, we want to take a look in the human base, and we see it is a fast altar. Okay. That means no Fire Lord, most likely, unless this is a very weird build. So Archmage first. Still a lot of uh, possibilities, of course, open to TH here. Could be a tower rush still, could be a map control game, and in a very wild universe, it could be an expansion. True. This is so unpredictable. But it doesn't really matter what he does. Level 3 Archmage is the key on this map. But expansion is certainly possible, especially with TH. He, I feel, I don't have stats on that or anything, but I feel he's the one going for expansions versus Orc the most. Not only on Echo, but also here. On Last Refuge. It's, hot. it's, uh, it's uh, really ballsy, though, to do that against Lin. Like, nobody is as good as knowing how far to take his Blade Master and Grunts, how far to push the damage exactly where to look for those limits. He took a bit of a risk on Turtle Rock. This would be a much greater risk now to go for the expansion. I guess if you're up a map, you can do that. If it fails, you still have the last map to rely on to bring the victory home for you. So I guess psychologically, it makes kind of sense. So Archmage versus Blade Master again with a sharp one burrow, standard play by Lin so far. Footman is coming over, scouts what's going on. Blade Master starts his creeping, of course, so looking for claws. This is a map where your Blade Master can easily go up to plus 25 damage, especially if the game lasts a little longer. So far, not much creeping, man. This is an easy day for the creeps. Uh, they will be thankful for TH. And look at the grunt movement, by the way, not helping with the creep, but immediately scouting. He does not want to get bamboozled by some cheesy creep route, like on Turtle Rock again. Doesn't want to give this Archmage easy level 3 again. 
But it's moving over with a scroll of speed, in fact. Okay, quite a bit of investment here to try to steal some last hits. He's only going to be in time for the last one. Does TH... Oh my god, he has the perfect anticipation for this because the footy was scouting for this. He sees the one burrow tech, but the Blade Master so far didn't do anything really. Only a Gloves of Haste. The Murlocs are actually blocking him, preventing the kill on the Vought Elemental for now. Tier 2 tech on the way, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a Lumber Mill, and there it is. Denies the Vought Elemental, right? Wow. He can get both. Ah oh, no, he has only one Water Elemental. And he blocks. Oh, nice. That was cool. But he's still gonna get this one. And he gets oh the god, second he... one as well. Oh my god, if he gets the second one, this is disastrous. Oh no. Oh, this could be an easy final. Oh, damn. Does he have the damage? Yes, yes he does. More footmen coming in. He's supply stuck again. TR all over again. Oh no. And TH is serving for the victory, man. This He must feel so great. So annoying here. Has to cancel again. Cancel late though. That's expensive. I think that's it though for the harassment. Oh, nice block from the grunt here. Keeping the bottom from shooting. I didn't take a look at the uh, experience, uh, excuse me, resources too closely for Lin. But I think he made that borrow too late, didn't he? Uh, it I felt like it was even. a little late, maybe 5-10 seconds late. But I'm not 100% certain on this, I might be wrong. TH though, going for a tower in his base, wait, like expecting a wyvern harass or something? A player's That's the only reason I can see, because he has the gun at Lin's hat, he just needs to pull the trigger. Victor, He's still far away from level 3 though, that is the one thing that is not working out greatly for him. But still, of course, Lin having only a single grunt, that is the big worry. Claws of attack for him, that's nice. Grunt, by the way, was scouting for the expo, he is trying to and rule nothing out here. And he sees the footies coming in. This is nice, has had a warning for this Beastmaster push, which is coming once again. And Claws of attack this time. So the damage is a little better, but the beast should be... Ah! There is a block, but he sends this... Yeah, summons the second water elemental in the base. So he can't really do too much against this. Blade Master is hurt as well. Cancels the healing immediately. Reveal also used, but he gets rid of the water elemental. So significant damage drop for him. But the Blade Master needs a potion. Has no mana anymore after this wind walk. And is waiting for the Shadow Hunter. There, he, can, he can't go for a hero focus with this... HP bar. But this was a lot of damage put into the Blade Master. That means the Beast Yeri finishes, the Boros all survived, the Grunts yeah. are healthy, yeah. and it's almost time for the SH to come out. Maybe. But now, of course, the Blade has to heal up. But that's working fairly fast. Nice for the block. Gets a Grunt kill. Nope. Oh, actually, okay, the Quilbies. Three of them. A player's forces are and this worked, yeah, as you said, this was a little bit of a wasted opportunity for TH. He had two water elementals here right next to the burrow. He could have kept him supply stuck again. Could have even gone for the beastery. But uh, yeah, there's double arcane sanctum and we saw this in the past two games. The first attack might not kill him. The second attack might not kill him. The third attack might not kill him. But in the end, the units are overwhelming. What's Lin's solution for that now? Here comes the lodge. Pretty late, of course. Oh, this would be the worst time to start this creep. He doesn't start it, though. Beastmaster, pretty low HP, out of position. Doesn't get focused, though. It's the Archmage. Only on level 2. He's pretty squishy. Speed scroll to chase after him. And that has to be the TP out. And now that's space for him to creep his laboratory. It should be, at least. I think he's doesn't sniping the, the item. Units. He's just sniping the item and then goes away. A mana stone would be fantastic. A health stone would be fantastic. A book of the dead would be great. All right, and he gets it. Mana stone for the Shadow Hunter. More hex. He's really creeping up the entire thing. That looks a little dangerous. Peon is moving out for the scout to see the human coming a little late, perhaps. All right, but he sends the grunts back already to heal. This is so cool. Gets this kill at least. SH though, still not level two. But the Archmage is not level three as well. Ensnare is coming. The Lodge is not up yet. We don't see a defensive tower. 
This burrow is really far forward. I don't think that's a position where you want to put your yeah. buildings in. I'm not a fan either. All right, here we go. Tower defense. One more time. Good damage on the Beastmaster plus a Hex. Can he get out? He has nothing to heal himself. And he's diving in. Backstab and the Beastmaster is gone. No more Quill Beasts. Alright. Almost level 3 for the Blade Master. Almost level 2 for the SH. Double level up here with this footy. That was a massive kill. So what do we go for next? He eats the Watch Elemental. He kills another Footman. But he has no Raiders here. That's okay. And Snare is coming. More Headhunters against the Towers. I think that's the most important part at the moment. Another Grunt is falling there, but the Shadow Hunter with mass mana goes for Almost the piercing and, damage. And, yeah, the, two, the decision to go for two Headhunters was really good. He just knocks them down one after another. And that's it. Towers are gone. And the Beastmaster is gone. He's not going to the Tavern to revive him. The Archmage is on his own with level 2. And the Kodo Beast, man. This damage that he brings in or it brings in wow. really yumiko towers, towers now <laughs> oh that looks like a desperate attempt to say the very least beastmaster's back right, we're gonna have 12 beasts but am he's at this stage in the game only level 2 am that's so weak with the first raider i think he's going for another archmage kill or attempt he had the upgrade before. Okay, Raider is coming. And not a single item on this Archmage. Blade dropping low. But there's a healing potion. And there's no burst of damage here that you have to be afraid of. No Stormbolt. An SH. Two and a half. Remember how we struggled to even get to level two for such a yes. long time? Couple more kills and he's level three. There's a lot of slow in this army though. Blade Master damage not that great, but we have the first Raider. Uh, he's not going for the AM. Yeah, it seems like with a speed scroll and stuff, that could have been an attempt, but okay. No Spirit Link here on this army. So one thing that's missing, he does have the mana for it. Speed scroll, moving forward, moving for the Beastmaster again, it seems. Yeah, he can't get out. Yeah, he is donezo. As he dies again. Getting the SH even closer to level 3. This is looking like the Equalizer, or does TH have another magic trick up his sleeve? From the base, we don't see any deviation, it's just more... Oh, he's supply stuck anyway, and he retreats. The first breakers are there to steal the spirit link, but he has to run away. He knows that the disable is way too strong with Hex, with Ensnare, and the speed scrolls. So, is this Lin overextending now again? We saw this on Turtle Rock 2. He used the mana stone, by the way. So big item gone. But the big mana potion on the blade! Oh, this is so great! And more kills. Backstab, crit. That's another one. For the SH, who now is almost level 3. One more kill for the SH, and he is at level 3. Will they really bring this series into game 5? It would be great for us fans, obviously, because this is the highest level of human versus org that we've seen in a long time. 450 mana extra on this Shadow Hunter, plus the clarity. And a scroll of the beast. Is that a spell? No, that's not. Kodo plus scroll? Ah, oh, he sold it, right? Yes, he did. Values the heal scroll more high. Ah, oh, there's, there's uh, breakers, obviously. <clears throat> level 4, Blade Master, with barely any creeping actually. And level 3, AM only now. Dude, this took way too long. Ah, well, the Blade Master got a little bit of the green spot, a little bit of the natural, and, and uh, the laboratory. So it's okay, I think. Finally, level 3 for the Archmage. Invisible Hawk scouting now. But this is the counter-attack of Lin. 49 supply, he's catching him. This could be a good position for TH though. Yeah, best position on the map. Does that make up for the worst heroes and the worst army? Well, maybe he doesn't even have the worst army. He has more supply, Cold is moving forward, trying to munch, but so hard here in this enclosed position. Still gets it off though. One breaker devoured. 
Heal wave coming in just barely in the nick of time. And when there's no ball to be worrying about, this is so easy to micro. Heal throw coming in as well. The militia flank, but only four of them. Not too scary. Beastmaster in trouble as well with a wind walk. This could be the kill. And some hex perhaps, but he's not even looking for the second hero. It's just a meat grinder. Has any org unit died so far? I don't think so, but TH is losing one after the next. Using the big healing, uh, big mana potion first. Reinforcements are coming in from the north, but when they arrive at the battlefield, they're already halfway down. He might get the first kill. Nope, of course not. Speed scroll escape. And the Blade Masters now hacking and slaying against this beastie. Critical strike for 177. Lin has this. He might, like, if he's not doing a major mistake, he has this. This seems to be it pretty much. Level 4 for the SH as well. Colby is still trying to be annoying. Lucky break here, it feels like almost for TH to get out of this. Without a TP, without invuls, his hero somehow got out of this alive. Yeah, but I like that he's sniping the shop on one of the maps that he lost. The breakers were certainly a problem. With the snipe on the shop, it's not gonna happen. Invul and heal scroll goes towards the blade, and look at this! Oh, invul as well! On the Beastmaster, so seven seconds survival. But once this is out... I don't think much more. No. Oh, low, uh, actually. Invis. Invis. <laughs> nice. But he can't use reveal from the lab. Zeppelin time. Too oh, late. Yes. Level five. How did he see him? Ah, he was revealed from the dust. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> GG. Yeah, GG. We go. Coming. Full distance, baby. Lin comes back, winning the first and fourth map. And now it's basically a best of one. The next map is going to decide who makes it into the final of Doyu Super League. After this amazing early game from TH, what was the key moment for Lin to come back? I think that focus on the Blade Master was a big mistake. I remember when he was coming in with the Beastmaster, he didn't kill a Borrow, he didn't cancel the Beastiary, he only forced a healing potion. He killed a Grunt after. That's okay. But that was it. And yes, he cancelled two Boros, keeping him on one, one grunt for a very long time. And that is definitely an issue for the Orc. But AM never got to three. He invested so much into harassment, he never got to those level two water elementals. And at a certain point when the Orcs around 40 supply with level three SH, you can't do anything anymore with a level two Archmage. Okay. Next map and the deciding map is Twisted Meadow. Certainly favors TH, but Lin defended it before. <sighs> it's gonna be epic. <clears throat> we had two more subs, by the way, during our last game. Thanks for nothing with the first time sub. And Shady Fox with a 12 months saying, My longest running sub on Twitch, and no one could deserve it more than you guys. Here's to another 12 months. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. It's greatly appreciated. All right. Thank you from my side as well, obviously. Uh, next map is Twisted, so we have to use Watch again, Remo. Um, I don't really know. Uh, like with four player maps, they don't have too much slots for us. Yes, I, yes. I feel like yeah. they could kick some other guy that has less viewers, but whatever. It's okay. 1,600 viewers watching this in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, at least here in Europe. Thank you very much for that. For good reason. Like, this is orc versus uh, human at the highest level. Yeah. It may uh, have been only one play style, with TH only favoring tower rushes here, it seems, but it's still so well executed by both. I agree. Uh, I've rarely seen better human versus orc um, in recent history, I guess, or this year at least. <clears throat> It's Easter time, we all have holidays, yeah? Ah, not for us! <laughs> Especially Remo on Saturday has to do uh, a lot of work alone. Poor guy. I hope you will. So, um, when are you gonna be gone anyways? Um, Saturday and Monday. But Sunday you're here? Yeah. Okay, Saturday and Monday. If all, right. all works out well, but I think it will. Moving to a new flat on Saturday. And, and then, then you'll the be able... And then you'll be able to sleep again. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> at, at the moment, it's really rough. Oh, damn, we have another sub by <laughs> Anus Bonus. <laughs> First time sub and welcome, buddy. 
Nice nickname, bro. All right, guys. The tension's building up. One map to decide who makes it to the final. The best orc or the best human in the world at the moment. Uh, who's going to be the first one in the grand finale? And As afterwards... you said, Twisted should be favoring TH a little. And afterwards, we have, of course, a human and uh, Night Elf versus Undead with Life and 1 to 0, the two young guns here in the scene. I wonder if TH is going to throw the curveball and on Twisted of all maps is going to play map control. But um, this would I don't be, think so. This would be ridiculous. But what would also be pretty unfair would be Tome of Experience now. <laughs> How much that would decide or, you know, influence at least. I mean, it's not GG any, by any means, but uh, it's not good either. Two new subs coming in. Thank you, Warm Up and Zerk88, both with Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, with, if you have a student account or anything, you can sub to one channel at Twitch for free, and we would gladly accept uh, your support here with that. You don't have to pay <clears> anything except your Prime subscription, of course, and we get a good share of that. So thank you very much, guys. And you get the replay. Speaking of the replays, um, there seems to be an issue with the Twitch messages at the moment. So if you want the replays, please join our Discord. Connect your Discord to Twitch and then you get invited to a sub-only room and I will share the replays there. That is the safest thing if you want the replays of those matches because we sent them out uh, after every cast. <laughs> and of course you can reach the Discord by discord.backtowalkrat.com. Hell yeah. Game has started at this very moment. We have to wait for the protection here, or for the game protection. Three minutes and then we have it. Who's your favorite here? I think it, it, it all comes down to the first three minutes of the game. If it's a term of experience or not. If it's a term of experience, this is basically a free win for TH. If not, I think Lin can defend this with the momentum going for him I'm pretty sure Lin would win an open game here on TF so many subs at the moment guys uh, I'm glad you're enjoying this walk as, as much as we are Jet Flash subbing as well for the first time welcome um, yeah Tom experience is going to help him out a lot but with or without Tom he's going to get level 3 moving around the green cams on the map <laughs> depending on the Tom though He's going to require more mana for more water. You were crapping the out again. Hey, man. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, now you're back. What's going on with Discord, dude? It's... I don't know. It's a little annoying. What's the chance of getting a tour experience? Is it one fifth, or like 20%? Yes. I think you should just remove it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like one super, one click in the super method. imbalance. Remove tome, remove crystal ball, yeah. and remove a few other things. But not the talisman of evasion. As you saw, he did have an impact on uh, the turtle rock game a little bit. When we talked to Matt Morris in uh, California, he actually had an idea for uh, the crystal ball, which I thought was pretty cool, actually. So when you use crystal ball and you hit an army or a hero or whatever... Are you supposed kind of... to talk about... Are you allowed to talk about it? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, okay. just, it's just brainstorming. Okay, okay, just asking. <laughs> so that you get tagged. Where you, can, you, where you keep vision of a unit, like, you know, fairy fire, but not with too much duration. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Okay. And another sub by Dazemultor28 for the first time. Welcome, man. Thank you so much. And we are getting closer to the 450 subs again, which would open more slots for uh, new emotes. Right. You know what? I'm going to uh, restart Discord. Maybe that helps. All right. And another sub, poop two times daily. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the brother of floss two times daily? <laughs> like, you have different priorities here, maybe, you brothers? 
<laughs> All right, boys, enough with the talk. This is game five of Lin versus TH. It's hype, and it's the decision who is going into the Doyu Super League Grand Final. <sighs> I am really excited, and I want to see an epic game of the scale of Focus versus uh, Romantic that we've seen recently with a farseer on this map. It is all possible. Welcome back, Remo. Hello. Hello, hello. Do you poop two times daily? Depends. I don't have a fixed, uh, fixed amount of poops every day. Also, probably not the most uh, appropriate thing to be talking about here. I mean, we have like a little bit of more important stuff here as the game has started. Lin in blue, TH in red. Lin is not starting in the upper left, where you c would go for the Golem Creep as well. But no, he starts in the bottom right with a Blade Master and a two Uro tech right from the bat. But this determines a lot of the game. The Creep of TH against the Rock Golem. TUE or not, Flute, Rope, Subi Mask or not. One peasant lost. Slight little mistake, but that's okay. Sobi mask. Add to of agility. Elementals. So it's not the greatest. It's okay. The Sobi mask is, I think, worse than the uh, Rope of the Magi, but it's still up in the higher tier of items you can get there. So TH will be okay with this, but this is not imbalanced at all. Nope. And the Blade Master looking for some creeping here early on. Usually we see him be more aggressive, look for some peasant kills or something. Getting scouted by a footy though. Earlier he lost the last hit on AZ. He cannot afford to do this again here. Lin is going for a tier 1 war mill, by the way. Oh wow. This is very unusual. He gets it and the Claws of Attack as well. Good start for the Korean. And the scout is finishing, revealing the position of TH, who's not teching at the moment. But why this war mill? Yeah, this is super defensive. I guess with a two borrow tech, he kind of has the re money okay, over anyways, start. but it's not really true. All right, here comes the tech. Boy, oh boy, this is a late tech. But of we course, he knows with a fast creep from the human, his tech is also going to be very late. We saw that he was extremely prepared for the Fire Lord push on Echo. Maybe this is like his new strategy on Twisted, because he knows that the Tower Rush is coming. Super defensive. Where, where are all the grunts going? Oh, he's anticipating the militia to creep over here. And they're actually coming up now. But, but now he's forced to defend only with a Blade Master at home. But it seems to be working, I guess. The the are under Let's see. There's still plenty of mana for Water Elementals. He's not going Headhunters or anything with this Wommel. Also, no defensive tower. The shot position is really bad, though, if a tower push is coming. Because it's outside the base. Oh, there is a tower coming, actually. This is almost as defensive as it gets. But they find uh -huh. the shot. He unloads from the burrow to get the last hit here on the water elemental, and that's level two! But the tower looks mighty exposed. These footies can easily get this kill. Might lose a few hit points for it, though. Speaking of which, AM dropping low has the boots, however, now. They're in the middle, and of course, more mana regen through the subby mass. Tower is gone! And yeah. He needs repair against this with the water elemental with half duration, but okay, he gets it. The edge, of course, saves the footman as always. Another attempt of the militia creep, but this time the blade master is there and the grunts defend at home. Yeah, so nice how he keeps this from happening. But, but he's gone. paying a price for it. That price is borrow down and most likely grunt down as well. And I wonder, might this not be too expensive? The blade master has the staff. Oh, why is he not using the staff? Right, he's supply is. stuck at arriving at tier two. Loses a grunt, loses another burrow. He needs two burrows to get his shadow hunter. And this is not like LR, where the AM is so far away from level 3. In fact, he's pretty damn close. Finding the openings where they're supposed to be none. Oh my god, he's canceling it again. 
And he has another water elemental after this. And he's healthy. Thank so you, so much nasty. pressure. Is the ultimate damage enough though? No, it's close. He's taking Whoa. all damage for this. But there's level three. Another water elemental, this time level two, and that's easy cancels again. He's gonna have another water elemental, man. So B mask is pretty good. But this burrow finishes. He's still one supply down from getting a Shadow Hunter. This army is ridiculous. Three Kitu is done. He was supply stuck here. Both players supply stuck. TH only Ooh. now able to get a second hero. Has to be the beast master here, it seems like. But he's standing at the tavern, not getting it yet. He's a little low on lumber here, so he can't go for the sanctums yet. Yeah, like he master, researched he's the... almost level three himself though. He researched the upgrade. Beast three seconds. Late master and Firelord. grunts are creeping this. Claw would be great, but oh fire lord seconds. The push just got a little heavier. But there's a timing. I guess the, the Beastmaster scales better into the late game than the Fire Lord does. Can he somehow keep this beast real? He really needed a claws or a gloves on this Blade Master. He only got the ring. I mean, it's also good so he can tank more, but he needs the damage here, it seems. Because where's his damage? He only has the blade and what? One grunt or right, three grunts, but they're not here. They were busy creeping. SA just coming out, only 30%, however. What's the target? Windwalk on level two. He's really speedy. He has a lot of mana, by the way, on this blade. But there's a heal potion on the AM already. Wow. He is prepared for this so well. But he draws the attention to the units. And so the buildings come up. Three towers up now. Shadowhunter, 60% out. The first raider. Oh, demolishers now. He switched from raiders to demolishers. I think a choice that we can all understand after watching Aquiles. But this time it's only one barracks, not two. Triple water momentum. Holy crap, the damage. And I wonder why Lava spawned. Maybe he thought he was gonna be fighting against the Grunts longer. But as it is, there's gonna be no more Lava spawn here very soon. Alright, SH is out. Serpent wards! Whoa. Against the towers. Double wards for piercing damage. The Demolisher is coming up. If Lin wins this man, this is absolutely nuts. He knocks down the first tower, he knocks down the second tower, the Blade Master is in trouble, has to go in Windwalk, but the damage is still enough with the Serpent Wards. And actually, somehow we have Willaba spawn again. I guess they split it somewhere, just barely in time. And so many summons here still. Summons against Wards, what's gonna win? The Demolisher is not microed well enough, but he buys time for the tower. 800 range is of course great. How much mana is there on the SH? 150. He is taking good care of those serpent wards. He needs to repair the tower though. The watchtower in the back is taking damage. How quick is he with this? He has to ta um, micromanage so many tasks. He gets the repair off and I think that's gonna be good enough. Scroll of speed to get the blade master to safety. He's so low. As I said, the shot position is horrible. Two summons knocking on the watchtower and the watch Ooh. is <sighs> not over. Oh baby. But he Ask. has two more grunts here. SH in trouble as well, going for an early shop. What is this game? Blade Master's back, brought a mana potion. He's gonna have two backstabs here. And one swing at least. AM's in trouble! He's in trouble! Has a TP though, uses it. This Nothing rush horrible. is defended again. Two curious? more kills. Lin what? survives! What, what is, is semi-final? Holy shit. Lin, I'm sorry Neo, but I think you have lost the title of King of Tower Defense. <laughs> I am gladly, gladly, gladly handing my title over to the King of Oryx. But let's not praise him too early. There's still a second coming. But there's no casters. The Archmage has no TP. Only a potion. And there's a Demolisher already. There's barely anything else though. Ensnare looking for the target. But again, he didn't see the healing potion. Lin a little too sloppy, not looking at the items. Otherwise, he would have never committed to this. More militia coming. Okay, Only try. towers and tier 1 units. Second demolisher coming. He's diving for the first one. This is a lot of damage for him. But is he is capturing some reinforcements? Not really. This demolisher, mass repair, but he can't hold it. Hero kill. He has three raiders. Just click on the heroes, dude. Do it. 
He's not doing it though. Does TH go for the? He doesn't have sanctums at all. He's not building he has them. No sanctums. He's fully committing to this. And again, the serpent wards help with the upcoming towers. Cancels the first one. Cancels the second one. The third one coming up though. Demolisher is dead. Cancels the third one as well. Shadow Hunter. The watchtower in the back is gone though. And snares. Here we go. They're raining in onto the Fire Lord. He's level two. He's gonna take a while to get back. Next end snare with a few crits. He's gonna die. One more hit. Bam, level four. And level two critical strike. Shadow Hunter survived this healing up now, but the raider well will be lost soon. Again, towers. But there is one more ward, and the raider, and headhunter's coming now. The demolisher could help, but he taps out! And Lin is a genius, he's a master, and the humans are crying again as he... I don't know how. Damn, I that was... have no idea. That was so sick. Lin... Next level. Playing this so amazingly well, that was... a pleasure to see. <laughs> Probably the only orc in the world who can do that. Holy shit. Unbelievable Warcraft that we just witnessed across the last 90 minutes here. This had the length of, of a football game, but man, the emotions that we've been through. This was World Cup final level. Unbelievable. Wow. And, and... TH, man, was it too greedy to go for this tower push? I mean, the Fire Lord decision questionable in my opinion yeah, if he goes like for either. a beast master and just pulls out a normal caster push i think his chances of winning are a lot higher yeah i don't really understand the fire lord either he must have had a good reason for it but i also feel the beast master could have been better he saw the but opening and it was a good early game for him with all the burrow cancellations and lynn got back from situations like this so he said okay with the beast master i was in trouble a little bit so let's do it all inning, but it didn't work as the defense was amazing. And let us in the final. Who's gonna be his opponent there? It's either gonna be life or one two zero. As you can hear the chains rattle, we have no break in between. So <laughs> Dude, next like, game is literally no breaks. What the hell?